Hey! Afternoon! Hey John. Hey David. You ready to do this? Yeah, we we got a really long question. So <laughs> I'm Dr. John Belkwitz from Intelligent Concrete, Director of Research and Development. I'm Dr. David Harris, I'm the principal engineer for Intelligent Concrete. And we're about to introduce you to the longest question we have <laughs> ever received. And there's no award for it. None. <laughs> zero. Zero. From Johan Creel. Hopefully I said your name right, Johan. Um, ready? Steady? <laughs> Ding! It's a long question. I don't know if anybody question. finished that. So if you had yeah. to pause it, it's a really good question. Very specific. Yeah, then that's good. David, what, if you could summarize that question into five words, what would it be? Make lightweight blocks strong. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Make lightweight blocks strong. So that's what we got out of the question. And Johan, hopefully, we can answer that, and David, the answer... Yes. That's the answer. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. But, ha but how, John? Oh, but how. <laughs> um, so the, the biggest thing when it comes to uh, lightweight anything is that you're normally introducing a much lighter material than the hydrated cement matrix of the concrete itself. Now, the hydrated cement matrix is going to be anywhere from 3.15 grams per cubic centimeter or 196.6 pounds per cubic foot down to somewhere around 62.4 when it comes to hardened and liquid areas. Outside of that, air or anything lighter than that and air is going to make the concrete lighter. So if you can reduce all the heavy materials by introducing air in your given cross section you can effectively reduce the concrete weight significantly to make it one strong but two easy to lift and put in place especially when you go into higher stories right now how do you make it stronger one way don't put as much air in right now in doing so you make it heavier increasing transportation costs increasing uh, your point values on your OSHA or whatever country you're in regulations for lifting things up so how do you still have the same amount of air or even a little more air and get a higher strength well we have to make that cement strength more efficient cement strength or we can also use start let, let, cement is the hardest thing to pay, play with in my opinion because it's a chemistry set right and once you do this with it's like going to the doctor you know doctor you tell the doctor i have uh, my my back hurts so the doctor gives you a pill for your back and then your head heart starts hurting you because you're taking something for your back so he said here's another pill for your head but because you're taking the pill for your head it's the same thing with the cementitious composite right once you put one thing in you're going to get a synergistic effect that you can or can't use and you're going to have to deal with that Playing with the granular skeleton first is a lot easier because it's more mechanical and if you add more water to the rock, nothing really, well, yeah. to a degree nothing really happens. So changing your granular skeleton so you have more of a gradation envelope and you know that's what we do with concrete right. so we don't need as much paste to get that fluid property and still the hardened properties that you need. So that's the first thing I would do. Right, so we're going to fill up the voids with a lighter weight material or something like that, but we still need that air. Still need that air, but the question was how do we make it stronger? Right. So the first thing that we can do is play with the granular skeleton so we don't need as much paste. We still need the same amount of air or more. Right. Now, playing with that granular skeleton, you can also replace that rock slash sand that's common, the commodity-based product, and replace it with something like carbide or hem uh, hematite sand. You know, something that has a lot more strength to it, might have a little bit more weight, but based on a little bit more air, that little bit more strength that we're gonna get, it all balances out. Right. So from the granular skeleton, that's when I would start playing with my hydrated cementitious matrix, either by using colloidal silica, more pozzolanic material to give us more of that, you know, increase in that calcium silicate hydrate, more alumina based to give us more of that calcium aluminate silicate hydrate, you know, when it comes down to it, 
It's all the things that we would do for damn concrete. <laughs> Did not see that coming. <laughs> for damn structures. Well, we have to create a hydrated cement matrix as well as a granular skeleton that is optimized. Right. We can't use too much of one versus the other. It sure. all has to be balanced to get that segregation free mixture. Right. So I, I think it's important that we, we, we have to take both of those things into account. And of course sure. the air. What David said is, is right about the air. We still have to put that air in there, but it's everything else that we're working with that we have to take into account. Right. So we use more efficient materials throughout. Right. right. We use the um, cement uh, supplementaries. We use coil silicone or some form of supplementary. Carbon nanotubes? Carbon nanotubes um, to get more strength out of, out of that paste. Mm -hmm. And uh, we should be able to make a lighter weight concrete, but still strong or stronger. Now, what you could do with some of that air is use hardened air voids. Right. There are some companies that have created polymer-based airs, or even after the fact, when the concrete is already hardened, come back with colloidal silica-based hydrogel to, you know, not densify those, that pore structure, that pore connectivity, but put a little resiliency in them, and a, a hydrogel or three-dimensional nanosilica structure that has a little bit more strength to it than, let's say, an air void, and then it also will have some rigidity to it, but still maintain that lightweight. So you're talking a, a coating over the hardened concrete, is that what I understand? Using, so there are colloidal silica based technologies, it's a colloidal silica with some type, of either a catalyst or a very specific type of electrical double layer, either created by sodium or potassium or calcium combinations. And when you spray them into the concrete, because they are coated to a certain degree, they can migrate, so they're not like the silicates which have a tendency to right. react on the surface, they migrate it to the surface and based on the cement pore solution, this should ring a bell for you because yes. we're running some of those projects right now, that gel changes over time to a super highway for chloride ion transport and the torch velocity change, not only to give us the sealing capacity but also almost like a healing, with that being said, it's still lower than the unit weight of concrete. Right. So it's a topical um, admixture, essentially. Surface, subsurface. So additive. I would additive. Say. Additive, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, very good. Awesome. All right, so thanks for joining us today. Let us know if you got any concrete questions, concrete concerns. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Go concrete. <laughs> Beat asphalt. Look back.